everybody, I'm here with Chad Barker, and he is a fundraising friend of mine, and we promote his webinars often. And he is out of where? What's the name of your Hershey, company? Pennsylvania, where they make your chocolate bars, and uh, my firm's Productive Fundraising. Well, great. Well, I asked Chad, what interesting ideas has he run into um, here at Icon? And so what do you think, Chad? You can take well, you know, I... Um, been playing around with QR codes for a while, and um, I'm seeing some vendors here that are really pitching them too. And I actually used a QR code um, in several of my clients' uh, end of calendar year appeals last year, and we saw a great response. So I have a trick uh, to help you use it more effectively. Well, well so where where is the QR code? You place it on the in the in the digital. Um, no, so I'm actually printing a QR code in the printed mailer. Um, so we put a photo in there that's showing whatever program we're talking about. And then we put a QR code right below it that says scan here to see a video of this program in action. Ooh, yeah. Ooh I love it. And so, then what happens? So they go to our webpage. We just kind of put like a unlisted YouTube video embedded on a page. They watch it maybe 20, 30 seconds and then immediately below it, or it redirects right to our giving page for a custom giving page just for that program. Brilliant. And what kind of results are you seeing? Yeah, so my two pilots, uh, one group had an 11% increase year over year, and the other was 17. So not scientifically, you know, it's a two-person sample, but I'm pretty excited about it, and there's going to be a lot of QR codes coming out of Productive Fundraising. I love it. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. I'm here with the wonderful Paula Attenfield, and she is a female CEO, I'm so proud to say, of Steve Thomas Limited in Toronto. Y'all here, Toronto, yeah. yeah. We're just a few blocks away, actually. We're close. Well, um... Paula is a good friend through the fundraising circles, but I wanted to ask her today, um, what what big ideas have you run into that are interesting to you? This is a great question. So um, I've been to a session, which was fabulous. And this session helped answer those questions as fundraisers that we all get, which might be, why do you get paid so much? Why do you get paid at all? Why are your fundraising costs so high? Why is your overhead so high? You know, we get those, you probably, oh, you've, you've had those all questions, yeah. 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 So there's a group of people, lovely people, who've put together some tools and framework for how to have those conversations, oh gosh, how I to answer the, I want, I right? missed that session. You missed that session. Okay, so, good. so so this gave the tool the session gave the tools for how to have those conversations and have them in a way where we're talking about the impact that we have as fundraisers. So whether it we're you know, we're feeding the hungry or we're curing cancer, whatever it is we're doing as fundraisers. We all have something that that's really important to us in our day job. So it's mm -hmm. about putting that forward and mm -hmm. changing the conversation. It's quite simple, but it's good to step back and think about these things. And so what is the one takeaway changing what conversations with our CEOs, with our boards, with our donors? Fabulous question. Well, this narrative gives the tool to have the conversation with anyone we want. So it could be the seat next seatmate next to you on the plane, your uh -huh. boss, your board, your grandmother, your daughter, whoever it is. And in helping in helping change the conversation, we hope to bring more people into this wonderful profession. And so we're really talking about the impact that fundraising has on the world, right? Absolutely, because it's all about making change. I'm here at Icon and I have the fabulous pleasure of chatting with Cassie McLean and she is um, director of Individual Giving for one of our consulting clients, NC Warm in Wilmington, North Carolina. How you doing, Kathy? I am doing great, Gail. I'm just glad to be here and be sitting here with you right now. Well, tell us about your scholarship, first of all. So I was awarded a Chamberlain scholarship from my AFP Cape Fear. And what does um, that mean? Um, the Chamberlain scholarship. What it means is um, you have the opportunity, if this is your first AFP conference, uh -huh. and there's quite a process. You have to write an essay, which I haven't done in a million years. Oh my goodness. Um, and your organization has to be supportive with the time off and all of that. Uh -huh. So you've got to come up here on a free ride, mostly? It is a free ride, totally. And y'all, the Chamberlain Scholarships or AFP's program to reward and develop emerging fundraising leaders. Yay! Indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so I was you. asking Kathy um, what hot topic, what ide hot ideas she ran into today. So what do you have to share with us? We'll take the mic. Yeah, sure. I 
be happy to try. Yeah. Um, so the first one was my first session was about what's working in fundraising, Gail. Uh -huh. And um, a lot of statistics, big deep dive into data. And really the answer was everything's working. So if you're stressing out over, um, you know, trying to work your programs based on generations, mm -hmm. the advice was don't do it. Because don't, don't, okay. don't segment by generation. I keep hearing that too. Donor identity is more important than the age of the donor. Yes. And what we mean by donor identity is like, like for example, they're dog people and they're cat people. And if you can appeal to teenagers and, or, and boomers uh, about cats and they love cats, you're going to raise more money, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's all right going to your value system mm -hmm. is the bottom line mm -hmm. with all of this. Yeah.